to be honest with you, I think I lost my sermon. <laughs> I was reading and I cannot find it now, but I have a coin. I don't know if that works. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, our Parent, our compassionate God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, and we said, it's a, a blessing to be with you, those of you who participate online today, later today, or later in the week, and to be with you, those who are here in person. Today we have one of those texts again that I believe that is challenging, but at the same time, I believe that it's a passage that sheds some light about the great compassion of the God that we proclaim, the God who is with us today. As I said two Sundays ago, we were talking about how God works with and through whatever or whoever is available. Remember that we talk about that. Today's passage tells us about God who will do anything to lead us to see God's reckless love, never-ending love. And even a pagan emperor can be an instrument of God's reign. And when we read, and we read that with, with, the, uh, with uh, Wayne McGuire helping us with uh, Isaiah chapter 45. And as we, you heard with our young worshipers, we have the story of Jesus who ch shocks people with a statement that they, did not, they didn't expect. And a statement that tells us about the simplicity of the message of the gospel, but at the same time, the complex implications of living out that gospel in our daily lives. So let's begin just by... by thinking a little bit of the circumstances in which we are, in which we live, and the question that I ask about, do we pay taxes? Believing that that's one of the things that I hate the most every year. And I don't say that just because of the amount of money that I need to pay, but just to go through the whole process and filling out forms or doing the program, it is uh, it's very difficult for me to do the, the taxes. I, I, I don't really like that process, and if you ask my wife, she will, she will tell you how much I complained for like three months uh, to, uh, towards the end of the year. But anyway, you and I are part of this political and economic system. Given to Caesar at that time, or given today, is easy in some ways. Even with all my complaints, it's easy, because it is basically a transaction. It's something that I do, I get it done and I forget, well, I forget well, when, when I receive my, my, my return. After that, of course, I completely re forget. It's easy. But we do it re regretfully, as I, as I said, but we do it. In the, in the passage in the Old Testament, you and I read that the Israelites now are facing another chapter in their journey. You may remember that I, I mentioned two Sundays ago that they were exiled. They were first exiled by the Assyrian Empire and then later by the Babylonian Empire. These two big empires destroyed the fabric of society for the Israelites, but also the Israelites experienced this exile when they were deported to a foreign land and they had to go through this. So the prophet comes now and tells that Cyrus is going to be the new emperor who is going to free them and to liberate them. Another empire, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and now the Persians. So the question will be, what could they have thought about Cyrus and this new empire? Do you think that they could trust the new emperor? Why should they trust a new empire? Two empires have destroyed them, desolated them, deported them. Should they trust a new empire? The prophet says, and if you read chapter 43 of the book of Isaiah, that God promises, that God never forgets the promise that God had made to the, uh, God's people. God sees God hears and God takes notice. 
God experiences the pain and the sorrow of seeing God's people suffer. And to me, this is an important aspect of the character of the God that you and I believe in, we live in, and believe in both. Because this experience of seeing God's people suffering evokes in God's heart an stunning reversal of what was happening and makes God to act in ways that, that cause a reversal beyond our understanding, beyond what logically could happen or not in our view as human beings. God experience in some way shapes the history of these people. God's experience in seeing us changes our stories and our journeys in ways that you sometimes cannot imagine. God is completely, intrinsically part of our lives, part of history. It is a mystery and at the same time is a challenge for us. And yet, God is in our midst. Again, in chapter 45, begins with a reminder of what God, of the charge that God has given to Cyrus. God reminds the emperor what God will do, will do through him to be able to liberate the people of Israel. And in the second part, verses 2 to 7, in, that ch in chapter 45 of Isaiah, we hear that God not only tells Cyrus what, he, what God is going to do through Cyrus, but God reminds Cyrus who God is. And we read like five or six times that God says, I am. The big I am. The God that never forgets God's promise. God who is moved to compassion. God which shatters the powers of this world. A message that is simple but also has ra radical effects in the life of the people of God, in our lives. I am. I am God, the only God here. Besides me, there are no real gods. I am the one who armed you for this work, though so you don't even know me. God will work in ways that we cannot imagine, in ways that we cannot understand. So my question was, could the Israelites believe or trust this new emperor that is coming? Should they trust this emperor? We know how it feels when we need to trust our politicians. We know what it feels when we are called to trust those in positions of leadership, of power. Because we know that sometimes they come with promises and they come with also plans that makes us feel that there is hope. And a few days, days later, we find out that nothing of that was true or that at the end of the terms, we're in a worse situation. It breaks my heart to hear just last week that 100 more billion dollars have been requested and probably are going to be approved for financing war. Can we trust the authorities? We have lived to, to, through one exile during the pandemic. But today, I know that we are living in another exile. A new virus is crushing lives peoples around the world and around us, crushing the hope of people. And need this new virus is the virus of war that is causing the divisions and the use of power and resources to perpetuate suffering in this community and around the world. This new virus of war is causing exile and isolation, abandonment and despair. The empire's, power, the, the empire's power is based on creating this sense of fear and abandonment, exclusion that leads to loneliness, to find a reason to be important or relevant that comes most likely in self-exaltation, 
as this guy, uh, disguised as love. Because in the name of love, now we are dropping to also bombs. God is not conformed to the standards of this world, of this empire. God is verb, not a noun that we put where we want it to, to be. God, it is a relationship, a living relationship, not an entity or a concept that you and I or anyone, anyone in the world is going to examine, dissect, or rationalize. I am, says God. I am who I shall be, which is one of the translations from the possible translations from the Hebrew. A reality that cannot be defined. A mystery that manifests among us in divine compassion. God is alive in the ongoing drama of our journeys, in a covenantal fidelity that cannot be broken by any of our brokenness. God is alive reversing our logic in order for us, for you and me, to be free. And it's in the midst of our own exile and our own displacement that God hears us, sees us, knows us, and hears our lament. The lament of the youth that need to face the challenges of being young in this age. The lament of parents who are trying to figure out what to do to keep their jobs or to be parents and keeping a job or to be able to be good parents, not knowing how to direct our children that are going through their own traumas. The laments of the elderly that sometimes need to find the ways to, need to find ways to stay alive because a society has forgotten them. And resources are not coming to them to be able to have even medication that is available and affordable for them. God hears the lament of the dispossessed, the displaced from their homes, from their homelands, from their countries. God hears the lament of those who have expressed, experienced the exclusion among those who are put against each other by ideologies, political positions, and beliefs, finding themselves isolated and lonely. Jesus said, give, their, give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And I believe that, as I said earlier, this is a simple message. I believe that God, Jesus, in this way, is reminding us this. Give Caesar what Caesar wants. You will see what Caesar does with it and with you. But give God what is God's, and you will see what God does in you, for you, through you, and with you. And these are the things that you may not imagine. The things that, as John said in the gospel according to John, the greater things that you haven't seen. Give to God, surrendering your will to God's reign of forgiveness, love, even love for our enemies. Detaching from self-made gods and to be willing to accept that God is above all. This is the reality, my siblings in Christ, of this divine experience and relationship with God. In this relationship of God who sees us, looks for us, and brings compassion to us to free us, in that you and I see the light that cuts through the darkness of our journeys, that brings hope and helps us to cope with suffering and despair in solidarity, in compassion, and in sacrifice. A sacrifice that propels us to reach out and to be reached by, by others, even those who we do not want or cannot trust, those who we may not want or can love. The message of the gospel 
is simple, my, my siblings in Christ. In my view, the view that the truth of God's character when God says, I am, is that you and I have the promise of the good news with us already. In this slide, let me summarize how I believe that this good news comes to us. God, no, God, no rulers determine who we are. God is above and beyond our history. God will work in unimaginable ways to fulfill God's promise, and God is not conformed to the world's empire requirements. This is the God who is with us today. We are free to give all that we are and all that we have, trusting that in God, in Jesus, we will see what God can do in, through, for, and with us. And for that reason, we give from our hearts to one another and to God as our children reminded, reminded us today. Thanks be to God for the freedom that we have in that compassionate God that is in the midst of our history. Amen.